I'm back home. Uh, it's 2017, and we all know what that means. It means that we're gonna start remembering the beautiful best books of 2016 that I've read. 2016 wasn't a great reading year for me because I was busy doing other things. Like, I spent more than half the year not in my home country, so like I was traveling around and I was like, you know, studying. But instead of reading, the desired 50 plus books that I usually read and every year I'm like 50 books is easy like I'm gonna be reading 50 books anyway this year I read 29 which is you know like a letdown but at the same time it's pretty good I don't have a top 10 just because I wanted to make sure that all the books I chose are books that I genuinely was like you know what you are top the first book is The Curious Incidents of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon I don't have this with me because I lent it out to my cousin. So this book is about a boy who has some form of autism, I don't remember exactly which one it is. He one day just finds a dog dead, I think, like the curious incidents of the dog in the nighttime. And uh, he's trying to figure it out, like what happened and that type of thing. And it's told from his perspective, which I found really interesting. And I don't know if the author did it justice just because I'm not very familiar with autism but based on the, the reviews online it seems like he did portray it accurately enough or that people do think that he did a good job with that specifically it was so great like I loved that book so much like I read it and I was just like yes second book I want to talk about is Master of the Game by Sydney Sheldon I got this from one of my good friends last year for my birthday so back in September of 2015 and I finally read it in 2016 because you know uh, reading is uh, difficult, I don't know. <laughs> this book has a multi-generational story, so it is about like a guy and then his children and then onwards like and so forth and then you get to see how their lives interplay and their different personalities and it's not told from anyone's perspective but it is just told like this is the story of this person, this is the story of that person, this is how it's happened. Like I found it great, like, like it was just great. Uh, how many times can she say great? I was thinking about the book after I read it and like I read it in the summer so even back in like October and November I was like when I was talking to people about books like this would come up it's like oh have you read anything by Sydney Sheldon? I'm like wait yes of course I did and then like you know we start talking about it and this is the first book by Sydney Sheldon that I've read which uh, is the reason why my friend gave it to me she was just like you, you, you how? <laughs> the next book on my list is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. So Amy Poehler is one of the writers and she's an actor of Parks and Recreation. I think she is one of the writers or she's a producer or something. So I love Parks and Rec. It is one of my favorite TV shows. Like I wish I had the time just to rewatch all of it and not feel guilty because like I haven't watched a lot of other TV shows and you know by the way Mary maybe read. Some parts of it were very funny but then a lot of it were pretty serious. The reason why I didn't like Tina Fey's bossy pants is I felt like it was trying to be funny. If you can tell someone is trying to be funny, it just decreases all the humor, like, saws mate, like, not gonna work. I found her observations about life pretty insightful, uh, you know, she's dealt through a lot, she's worked in a billion places. And she was also talking about women in Hollywood, and like, when you don't think about getting an Oscar, but then once they nominate you, you start to really think, oh my god, I want that Oscar, or I think it was an Emmy, or something like that. And that, uh, how it's, what it's like to be stacked up against other female artists that you really like. I thought this was very insightful and very great, I obviously recommend it. Being Mortal by Otto Gawande. It discusses how we think of death and how uh, death has been thought of in the past and how we deal with death, especially with modern medicine. You know, I'm in medical school. I do care about this type of thing. And death is interesting to me. Like, I'm not weird. If I have to tell you I'm not weird, does that just make me weird? <laughs> okay. I do think about death occasionally sometimes and I do think about death in terms of like the medical definition of death and what it's like to die in a hospital and I did really appreciate this just because he was talking about death in the modern world and how we look at it and how we treat geriatric patients and how hospice care works and nursing homes so I thought this was really good but then the one person I gave it to she was just like oh my god man this is so depressing and I'm like yeah it's an important topic and this made me want to talk about death to my friends and family and you know like what should I do, it's like what should we do to prepare for it, like I want to make sure that we all die you know well because it's gonna happen, might as well have it a good experience uh, for you, it's not never gonna be a good experience for everyone else unless you know you're a terrible person. Next book. <laughs> Next is Sputnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami and I really like this book for a lot of reasons. I read it when I was in Japan. As I was reading some of the pages, the character was going on a specific train line to a specific area 
And that was exactly what I was doing. Like, I was going on the same train line to the same area, and I was just like, oh my god, this is great. Like, now I understand the train lines of Tokyo. Like, it was amazing. Um, but I also really liked it just because of the, the merit of the book itself. I can never decide how I feel about Haruki Murakami just because his books are very weird, and that some of them you're like, all right, like, this is good writing, you know, this is, I'm interested in the storyline, that's great. And, like, he brings up something that's very strange, and you're like, I'm not sure how I feel about this, like... Uh, I, I'm not okay with this. This is kind of weird. I feel like I would recommend it to people, but I feel like if they read it, they're gonna be like, Mary, why are you so weird? Like, why did you like this? I'm like, it's it's good. I'm sorry. It's told from the perspective of a guy and he's talking about a girl that he's always loved and he's telling her story. Um, and her story doesn't involve him in the sense that she loved him back. It was more about how she was a struggling writer and um, how eventually she was employed by a really sophisticated woman and then it was about kind of her relationship with this woman. I thought it was great, but there were some obviously weird bits. It's Haruki Murakami. Next is The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, which is a beautiful, great, amazing book. There were some passages where I was just like, oh my god, is this me writing this book? But just because of the way that she spoke, like some of her monologues, I was like, this is so strange to read. A good friend of mine got me this book when he traveled to the United Kingdom, where, you know, they have books more than they do in Bahrain. Amanda Palmer is a wonderful artist. I'm just not a big fan of her music just because I'm, it's not my kind of music. But um, she talks about what it's like for her as an artist. It's sort of memoir slash how-to a little bit. Just, you know, how to get over yourself, kind of, you know? Don't be afraid to ask for help. It's really important to be able to ask for help when you need it. It's really important to connect with the people around you and how she was talking about the importance of being vulnerable and she talked a little bit about her relationship with Neil Gaiman uh, and some of the hard things that she's had to deal with in life and like I just found it very insightful and very great um, I just again I just tell people to read it like um, The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer just like go ahead read it it's great <laughs> and the last book I don't have with me it is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams it was recommended to me by a good friend of mine in Dublin, uh, and then he let me borrow it, so thanks, Joe. Uh, I found it really funny. It is literally about this guy who is on planet Earth, uh, and how there's an alien who is also on planet Earth, uh, who looks like a human, and their journey through space. It's really funny, like, it's my type of humor. It's one of those books that you kind of have to read, like, it's been on my to-read list for so many years, but I've always just been like, yeah, you know some point, like, I'll get to you, like, you know, maybe one day. And then that day happened in the Dublin, and I read it, and it was great. Let me know if any of you read some really great books in 2016 that you think that I would like. Peace out, homies. Goodbye.